just thought that I would uh, change up my venue just a, a little bit and introduce uh, that song to this next uh, portion, which uh, I am calling uh, this about marriage, marriage itself. And um, that's one of the very, very first Christian songs that I remember hearing as, uh, as a young boy uh, when my parents uh, took me uh, to church uh, way back. And I must have been somewhere around the ages of uh, six to eight years old. But it's always been a anthem song for me <coughs> in relative to my uh, Christian upbringing and my Christian faith ever since uh, I was uh, very, very young. Well, right now in this portion, I would like to uh, talk about uh, marriage. And uh, this has taken on a whole new concept in, uh, in the world today, and even in the Christian church. And what I'd like to speak about is, is not the freedom that all the uh, worldly ways are out there to, you know, look at one another on a first date or whatever and <clears throat> hop into the sack. I want to just uh, refer to some of my own uh, personal experiences and related to, uh, to Christianity and to the church itself. But way back uh, when I was uh, fairly, fairly young and, and still a believer and believing in, uh, you know, what, what I ought to, and uh, I'll say this before I get uh, too much further, that uh, even as Christians we all make mistakes and uh, th that is something that uh, we're, we're never perfect in, in the way we think or the way we operate or whatever and uh, so we make mistakes along the way and then what we have to do is we have to uh, repent and say to the Lord uh, that was a mistake, uh, I, I erred on, on that part uh, significantly and uh, so move on from there and uh, work things out a little bit better. Well, today marriage is a lot, lot different than uh, what, uh, what it used to be, as far as I know in the research that I've done. And uh, I was married uh, twice before. Uh, my present wife, uh, okay, she is, uh, her name is Janet, uh, she is uh, Métis, and uh, we've been married for 35 years. And uh, okay, it was like uh, you say in baseball, uh, you're up there for three strikes, if you don't hit the ball on the third strike, you're out. And so basically, uh, with, uh, with um, Janet, my present wife, it was a home run and uh, has been a total joyous uh, walk uh, for 35 years. Now, she was uh, a practicing Christian when I first met her, and uh, I met her in, in a very, very interesting way as well. But I want to go back uh, a little bit into the, the first two that, uh, that I experienced and had, and each one of those only lasted... Uh, for a period of about seven years. And I want to tell you one of the concepts that I have right now is that people ought to be very, very careful entering into a marriage relationship. Uh, there's more thought uh, that should go into it, more questioning, more examination of uh, motive. Uh, and one of the things that I refer to is sustainability. That goes along, that word is important, that goes along with our Christian faith as well as it does was the fact how long would we consider this relationship to, to be sustainable and just like our faith in Christ how long do we think we ought to make this commitment for and the short and sweet answer of that is hopefully forever until the day we're taken up into glory uh, should we be faithful and uh, but like I say there are situations there's mistakes along the way and uh, there are certain ways that you can deal with that or examine that prior to, uh, to a marriage. Uh, and we're talking again about uh, within the Christian body, within the Christian church. And uh, so just because somebody says that you should get married or this was okay to get married, I know of circumstances where uh, that was wrong advice, even for pastors to give somebody uh, in, in local churches where I've had that experience. And uh, think about it this way too, that a lot of these marriages, okay, uh, there's a lot of celebration, there's a lot of excitement, there's a lot of preparation, uh, there's food to prepare for, there's the actual ceremony, there's the location. Uh, the total amounts could end up being multi-thousands of dollars. And then there's the honeymoon expenses. A lot of people choose to honeymoon and honeymoon on some exotic uh, island somewhere or to go to Europe or someplace like that. So we're talking about not only a, a spiritual investment here, a psychological investment of 
mind over matter, so to speak, but we're also talking a tremendous financial uh, expense as well. So getting back to the, the first situation that I was in, um, I was uh, kind of uh, promoted with this uh, young lady uh, from my sister, uh, and I grew up with my sister, and I thought, okay, she knows a lot of things and uh, can give me some expert advice. And uh, I took her advice, and I met, uh, met this lady. And it was kind of, okay, on, against the advice of one of the pastors that I was attending that church at the time. And uh, there's where I made a mistake because I thought I knew, I knew better, I knew best or whatever. But little did I know about this lady's background. And uh, just to sum this up a little bit, okay, uh, her background involved uh, growing up with a brother who I didn't know at the time she was in competition with this guy. And he was uh, going in uh, uh, to be a doctor. Uh, she was going in to be a, a nurse, uh, which went along with uh, kind of my, not expectations, but uh, that was okay, that was good, that was a good uh, career, good pr profession. But little did I know about the family background. Uh, not only was there competition between the brother and sister, uh, right from perhaps an early age, uh, and that was one of the main factors that got in the way of that marriage, but it was also mental illness. And I put this out in big capital letters and warning to everybody out there, be aware the, to the best of your ability and knowledge to check out if this is in the DNA or in the family background of the person that you're planning to get married to. And uh, this one lady, um, okay, I, and I didn't know this at the time, um, her dad was uh, under the care of the mental health system, and he actually, at one point in time, uh, killed himself and committed suicide. So that does not go well within the DNA or the childhood experiences, whether in the womb or childhood experiences about having to deal with this with respect to, to your dad not being home or whatever the case may be. Now as time went by, uh, okay, and things seemed to be going fairly well, there was a point in time where uh, she kind of let me know that there were kind of changes in her plans or in her ideas or whatever, and uh, she announced uh, one day to me when we were living up in northern Manitoba, uh, she said, well, I'm going away to Saskatoon to increase my education. She wanted to become a, a, a teacher in the nursing field. And uh, I said to her, I said, well, why don't you just wait and uh, I'll take a year off uh, school, a year off teaching, and we can go there together. And she, she then announced to me that she was already enrolled in this college and that the term was starting in a month or so. And I looked at her and I spoke to her and I said, you're giving me a, a message about this marriage, aren't you? And she said, yes, I am. And so as she left, uh, that, that was pretty much it. And so what, what does the scripture say about that? The scriptures say, well, if one partner leaves, let them go ahead. You're in no way bound uh, in that situation. And so sad as it was, um, you know, I wasn't too happy about it, but you have to make adjustments in your lifestyle and, uh, and go from there. And then the next situation that I got into was, was another one that uh, I totally blame myself uh, about. And uh, I uh, flew away to uh, a foreign country, uh, believing and thinking that, uh, that the best women were over there, which was uh, kind of a not whole type of thinking in my mind at the time or whatever, but I guess I was kind of struggling to think about survival and what had just happened or whatever. And uh, anyway, anyway, I met uh, several people uh, there, you know, in that uh, country. And uh, this lady eventually came back and uh, uh, set, set up a home base uh, with me and things like that. And everything seemed to be going fine. And uh, in a previous message, I had announced that there was one uh, little fellow that passed away. In, uh, in this in a marriage and I'm speaking of this one in particular so little did I know also about the background of this person and again I want to emphasize to everybody out there who's watching this 
sit down with your proposed person that you're looking at getting married to and uh, talk a bit, try to find out uh, about some of the experiences of growing up, about family background, uh, things like that, because one of them, well, you can have serious things growing up too. You can experience abuse within a family, which uh, I know uh, in, in, in my own personal family, uh, aunts and things like that, and uh, other people who experienced uh, bad uh, tra uh, traumatic experiences within their own family. So this lady, I did not realize, had a severe, severe mental problem and uh, mental uh, aspect in her background, which came down the DNA line actually in her family. And um, to, to make this kind of explanation uh, a little bit more simple and, and short and whatnot and to the point, um, there, there, was, there, there was no way out of it other than to uh, ultimately bring it to a close and bring it to a collapse and things like that. Now, only in the Bible that I know does it speak about possession, okay? And I experienced that in my second marriage with this lady. I did not know that mental illness was as deep as, as this, uh, but it was there. And uh, Jesus uh, dealt directly with possession, uh, using his authority uh, in the name of uh, God and, uh, and the, in, in the name of Jesus himself, okay? Had the power and authority on earth over all things. He spoke to the demonic and uh, he released uh, several, several people from that. But you know what? Take it from me, okay? I could have been killed along with uh, one of my surviving sons there that I talked about before could have been killed numerous, numerous times. And uh, only one thing saved me, and that is God the Father saved me because he has had always a work for me to do. And uh, so, you know, try to find out, like, don't get all wrapped up in with somebody who gives you a pleasant smile, and I'm talking about in the church, what you've got to do is you've got to sit down, you've got to think about it, you've got to talk about it, find out, uh, what, what's on a person's mind. There could be diseases lurking there right in the DNA, and that happens with uh, a childbirth and, and children. I talked about that in the last session and whatnot. But marriage, you're preparing for that. Maybe, maybe this person that you're going to get married to does not want to have any children. And right now, as of this day, I know of a, a handful at least of Christian people who are having serious problems with their marriages. They have uh, separated and, and uh, maybe not legally divorced yet, but are definitely uh, separated from their original spouse. There are children involved in this, and um, it doesn't make for something that God decided in the first place to uh, have as uh, a, a perfect thing. One, one day, my wife and I, my prison wife, we were watching TV, and uh, all, all of a sudden, uh, and this is how kind of things come to me. The Lord gives me ideas. He gives me messages. Uh, I've uh, written books, uh, 22 books in my lifetime already, and uh, lots and lots of poems and music uh, that's online. And this is going to go on to my YouTube site at 8 uh, Eagles Gather. But uh, every, every step along the way, you, you've got to be so, so careful. There are many, many situations and things that can, can get in the way. And uh, don't just take uh, things for granted. My wife and I, when we got together and uh, we decided to, this was my third, uh, third time uh, at swinging at the, at the ball, and I struck a home, room, home run, as I said. But uh, we said to one another at that point in time, she had been married uh, before, uh, have, uh, has two boys and the grandchildren, and, and we said, okay, what we're going to do, we know about intimacy in marriage, and uh, we got engaged, and we said to each other, we're not going to do anything else. We've got the experience by being married before. We are not going to do anything else until we get married. And we have actually witnessed to Christian people that way, and their answer has been, really? You did that? And I look back at them and say, well, what other than that should be expected of people who are calling themselves a Christian. So I want to leave that with you 
and uh, you know, sit down, talk things out, um, you know, find out a bit about uh, the person's upbringing, about their DNA, their past, or whatever, and uh, just don't rush into things uh, very, very quickly. But uh, uh, take time in this because it's a decision that is supposed to last a lifetime. And like I said, we're watching TV one night, and uh, I said this this young girl, she was uh, driving race cars, and because her dad drove race cars, and I said to my present wife, I said, you know what? I says, look at that. I says. Can you imagine, you know, the potential of getting married to somebody and they like to drive racing cars? And sure enough, the next evening on TV, we saw exactly that same thing happen, where this girl, okay, drove racing cars professionally. Now just think about that, how that might get in the way of a marriage that was thought to be or going to be in a certain way uh, and without expectation it changed. or. Think about this possibility. Uh, in this day and age, uh, younger people could be called up for war service at any point in time. What if the proposed uh, lady that uh, you're intending to look at and perhaps actually get married to wants to be a jet pilot? Oh my goodness, all of a sudden that changes things drastically because once you're in the military, you can get posted to almost anywhere on the planet on short notice and have to go. So I'll end this uh, session right now. Hopefully it makes some sort of impact on you uh, to ask uh, questions rather than to take advice maybe correctly or incorrectly, whether it's uh, advice within the church or not. I've seen these uh, circumstances go both ways or whatever. And uh, yeah, so don't just think that this is going to be uh, a, a road paved with uh, roses and things like that. Um, it, it's not, it takes a lot of work, it takes a lot of self-examination and introspection. And so, um, take care, bless you, in the name of Jesus, and uh, there will be more sessions coming along. Thank you.